Kaplan is back with a conversation about the impact of the recent drought on our plants and what, if anything, we need to do about that. And all those vines climbing up in our trees. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, just a real interesting curiosity that I'm seeing out and about. There's a lot of spring blooming plants that are blooming now. I've seen azaleas, um, the, the holly bush right outside the uh, station mm -hmm. here. Um, uh, one of those terrible, terrible Bradford pears. They're blooming out of season. And this is strictly due to the summer stress we had. Um, a lot of these plants, they bloom in the spring and when those flowers drop off, the plant starts producing new flower buds. And those flower buds normally stay dormant through the fall, through the winter, and then they burst open in the spring. Well, with the drought we had, and then the brief rains we had earlier and the drop in temperatures, the plants are confused. They think it's spring and they're blooming. It doesn't hurt anything, although it is using up some of the flower buds that we would normally see in the in spring. The spring yeah. So that's the only thing. Um, again, something I mentioned the last time I was here, get out there and water, water the entire root system of your trees and your shrubs. And how, you know, I know that sounds like, okay, just take the hose out there and do it, but there is kind of a method to the madness, is there not? You need to get thorough coverage of the whole root zone. I find a sprinkler, even just one of those that goes mm -hmm. back and forth, um, and put out a, a cheap little rain gauge, capture the water, because you want one inch of water per week. Okay, and that's not really very much. It is not, but if you stand there and do it by hand, you're putting out much less than that. You think you aren't, though, because yeah. that big hose is like flooding the right, area. Right, but you're not doing the whole area and you're not putting out enough water. Get a sprinkler out there. Um, first couple times you use it, time how long it takes to get you that one inch. And that way you, you could set your, uh, your, your, your ding ding on your phone, as, <laughs> as my son says to his daughter. Um, but, but that way you know 15 minutes, time to move the sprinkler. All right, let me ask you this then, because we did have this drought and the ground was hard as a rock, how does that impact our watering? It does a lot because the ground is still very hard. And so if you put a lot of water on all at once, most of it is just gonna run off the yard and into the sewer. Um, so for the first few times, you may, uh, again, your goal is to get one inch, but you may wanna do like a quarter of an inch shut the sprinkler off for about 10 minutes, let the water soak in, put on another quarter of an inch and do that. And you only need to do that like the first time or two. And after that, the ground should be soft enough that it, would, it will absorb the water. That's interesting to think about because we, I mean, normally, unless that is pointed out to us, we don't think about that. We just, you know, flood the area and say, I did it. Right, and and, and, but most of that result. has gone down the sidewalk, down into the sewer and you're wasting your water and, and that's just... And the tree's still not watering. And the tree's still not getting what it needs. But we're going to talk about trees when we come back and all those little vines climbing up in them. Don't go away, Larry. We'll be back.